What is up, everybody? My name is Justin. This is Forever Self Employed. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to start a dumpster pad cleaning step by step. I'm joined with the dumpster pad cleaning expert, Mike Turman. Mike, how's it going, man? <laughs> What's up, Justin? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure. <laughs> um, before we get into this one, uh, I do want to let you guys know I got about a couple things. Quote IQ is giving away an F 150. So check out Quote IQ in the comment section and the description if you need help with uh, keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments. All you have to do is be a premium or platinum subscriber of Quote IQ to win the F-150. Secondly, uh, the How to Wash course is $100 off this week only. Check it out. It'll be the first link in the comment section description. You can uh, get all this for $100 off. Everything in the How to Wash course. Mike, you took the How to Wash course, didn't you? Uh, I love everybody. If you ain't, like, even if you're already in the business, why not? Why not just pay and go through it? You might find something that's going to help you. Absolutely. So uh, for anybody who wants to start a pressure washing business, but you're not sure what chemicals you use, how to mix them, how to clean every service on a residential job site, property protection, and much, much more, check out the How to Wash course. First link in the comment section description and also the truck giveaway. Second link in the comment section description. With that out of the way, Mike, introduce yourself to the people, man, uh, and, and let us know how long you've been in business and how you know all this stuff about dumpster pad cleaning. Yeah, I've been in business for a long time. Um, I did it. I started it because I was bored. Um, I got retired out of a, a, a job and I got injured and they were like, nah, you got to go. And I'm like, OK. So I got bored, started following Aaron and then Cody. And next thing you know, man, it just bloomed. And uh, you invest back into yourself and man, it just keeps going and keeps going. But I've been around. I've been around uh, legitimate business since 2017. Um, but I've been pressure washing for over 11 years now. Um, okay, excellent. I, I'm not, we don't, I don't do that now. I mean, <laughs> I think guys that do that. And then with regards to dumpster pad cleaning, Mike, tell them about, you know, you have a route going right now about how much the route is worth, things like that. Uh, if you're not making six figures on a dumpster pad cleaning route, you're, you're not doing it right. Um, so... Most of the time we build it to a certain spot and then we get rid of it um, uh, just because we can rebuild it again. And then you probably make more money selling it in the end. It's the same as window cleaning routes. It's exactly the same as doing a window cleaning route, dryer vent cleaning route, gutter guard route. There's gutter cleaning routes. There's there's whatever it is. I mean, the sky's a limit long. Once you start putting yourself in front of the customer, it's so easy and easy to put them in a, a contract and you just go and service it. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about every facet of um, the dumpster pad cleaning business in this video, equipment, chemicals, what you charge, basically everything. But Mike, like you said, you're doing six figures in dumpster pad cleaning and that's, you would say that's an easy amount to do, you know, a year dumpster pad cleaning, right? It's over 300 grand. Put oh, it that way. Over 300 <laughs> so if you're not making a thousand dollars a day dumpster pack cleaning, what are you doing? Right, Mike? Is that the synopsis here? Yeah, I used to be making more money than a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. But just to just to show people the opportunity that's out there, there's a huge opportunity with regards to cleaning dumpsters, right? Yes. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity out there and it's not it's not hard. You know, you need basic gear to do it. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, Mike. First and foremost, I want to talk about licensing and insurance. Like this is just the be the begin the first question we start with, right? Like, do we need a license? What kind of insurance do we need in order to get started with dumpster pack cleaning? Well, I don't know. Outside of New Jersey, you don't need a license to pressure wash in New Jersey. Um, the only time you would need a license if you were near like I don't know, if you were near like a run, like a, some kind of water runoff or there's like a drain that's real close to a pond or something like that. And the DEP comes in and there's like, Hey, listen, you gotta, you gotta like divert this water or you gotta put one of them. Like, uh, uh, I forget the name, name of them on um, these like foam pads around the drain and you gotta let it dry or dilute it for so much. And then you can release it. Uh, that's the only time you need like a license or any kind of permit near certain dumpster pads. I think we have one and the guy's like, dude, we don't even care. And he goes, you're not even, you're not using anything that's really going to kill anything. So you'll be all right. Um, but insurance, general liability depends if you're working for like an HOA or a property manager and they ask you for more. Um, and then that's pretty easy. You just give them your insurance company information and say, call my insurance company and ask them the policy or bloom policy I need to clean your crap. And it's 
you know, let make them work for you. Like that, that's what you pay your insurance company for. Absolutely. Okay. So sweet. So we just need a business license and then uh, some type of, you know, general liability insurance, right? General Nothing liability. too crazy. Yep. Nothing too crazy. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, you don't, uh, a million dollar policy for a dumpster pad? No, no. Yeah. You're way, I mean, uh, now, do you yeah, recommend you're maybe, maybe two hundred thousand? Maybe? Huh? Have you been able What's to that? leverage some dumpster pad cleanings into some larger commercial cleanings? Yes, absolutely. Most of the time, your large commercial cleanings. Most of those guys see what you do. They go back, and as long as you like broadcast an email to those important people because they pay you a lot of money, and you tell them, you just oh, uh, like a quick liner, like here, here's all the services that we have to offer, and they save that. And then they're like, hey, listen, you do parking lot painting? Yeah, okay. Come on in and do it. Give me a price. I tell people you know, this all then, the time. Once somebody finds a contractor, they want to stick with that person and they want to do as many things as those people offer. Right, Mike? Well, you, well, you already filled the paperwork out. You're already approved by that. They already went through the insurance. So you already did. Most of them have packets that you have to fill out. Or you have your own generic packet that you give them. Um, and it, it eliminates them doing work, which is a lot better. And most of the time, it's it's actually kind of funny because then they switch to your packet. And they're like, oh, man, yeah. this is way better than the one that we got. Like, yeah, let's just switch to this guy's packet and then we're, we're good. Um, that's that's big. That's so big. That's, com that's commercial commercial jobs. If, and if they have to do less work, because most of those people will get, wait, you think your phone's ringing? Their, their phone rings all the time and they don't want to deal with anybody as long as something they go like this just go get it done i don't want to deal with it right so that's a yeah. huge tip yeah. for anybody out there like, the and you want to talk about yeah. leveraging a lower end service like you know lower end service would be something like dumpster bag cleaning it's lower ticket than you know cleaning the whole parking lot or restripe and everything so if you guys want to leverage a lower end service to kind of land some larger jobs i think this is a great gateway for that and like mike mentioned Everybody's always interested in getting everything done that they can. So, Mike, we talked a little bit about um, licensing and insurance. Let's talk a little bit about what equipment we need. Do we need a hot water pressure washer? Um, can you kind of walk us through that? Yeah, hot water pressure, if you if it's a – you got to kind of do a little bit of talking on the phone with the customer you should be doing anyway. Uh, if, it, if it's like food grade, if there's runoff, if they got grease and stuff coming in there, um, yeah, I'd suggest you would at least – have like you know a real heavy dynamite degreaser and cold water or like if you just hit it once with hot water with a dynamite day i mean it's pretty basic after that uh, you so, should be doing that plus it's year-round service so you really want to kind of be using hot water when it gets cold out and mike with regards to equipment the reason why i ask that is because some guys you know are starting with maybe like a two and a half three and a half gallon per minute pressure washer can they go out there with like a low pressure washer like, what else do they need? Do they need, I think we talked about a blower beforehand. Do they need something to kind of move the trash out? Um, yeah, anything? so you don't get, like, sludge all over you. I mean, if the basic ones, if they don't have food in there, then you'll be all right. Um, you just kind of, you want to clean it up. You want to blow all the way around the whole thing. Um, you want to get all the trash out. Uh, you need uh, asphalt ones. Uh, like, concrete, you clean with a pressure washer. Asphalt, you got to scrub them a little bit. You got to agitate anything that's like you, you just it, you could see that it gets clean. Uh, you don't really don't want to put a pressure washer on that because that's um, uh, petroleum, petroleum based. Um, so you just kind of like uh, agitate it a little bit and you'll see them just send back and forth on it or whatever they are. And then you pull the trash out, bring a shovel with you, pick the shovel up, put it back in the dumpster. And then you can like upsell if you want to clean the fence around it, if you want to clean the dumpster can. Like the garbage guys notice that. Um, because there's less, uh, especially if it's a food grade one, there's less uh, drip going down their windsh their windshield when they pick it up. <laughs> the, you know, it's so kind of gross, but whatever. <laughs> with regards to equipment, Mike, I definitely want to get into some of the gross stuff about dumpster bag cleanings. But with regards to equipment, we can pretty much get started with any kind of setup uh, as long as we have, yeah. like, you said, a shovel, broom, maybe a blower to kind of get Wait, rid of the trash. What's the name? Soap is the key. Your soap is the key. If you have less power or less GPMs on your machine, you have to turn your soap up. You got to mm. turn your soap up so you make yourself faster. You shouldn't be spending all day on a damn dumpster pad that's 20 by 20. Come on now. You should be in and out of there in 15 minutes. Okay, perfect. So you're going to need a press washer <laughs> for sure. Let's get into the chemicals, Mike. You talked a little bit about dynamite degreaser, and you're talking about soap uh, specifically. 
So, you know, what kind of mix are we going with? Um, and, you know what I mean? What kind of uh, degree? Oh, I hit it with that sauce, man. Straight up. It'll <laughs> dilute that stuff. I mean, and, and I mean, if it's a food grade one and it's re- you'll see it. You'll see it like coming out of the dumpster, uh, especially if the dumpster's not that grand. great. Um, then you'll know whether you got to hit it again with like Dynamite D. Other than that, like after the first couple of times of cleaning it, you're getting a real good deep clean. If you have hot water, it's even better. You can SH that sucker with a little bit of a Southern draw and you're out of there. Okay, Mike, just for anybody who's going to watch this video and doesn't know anything about that, like, let's just say like we're talking to a complete noob that's never even seen a, a, a pressure washer before. They don't know what SH is. They don't know what Dynamite Degreaser is. They don't know anything. So Dynamite Degreaser is from Southeast Softwash. If you guys do need, do need a degreaser, check out southeastsoftwash.com. Um, but it, like as far as the mix goes, like what mix are we using? Like just like keep it real simple for me. Uh, pump sprayer. Any pump sprayer. I don't care if you go from the uh, uh, some dollar store pump sprayer that are like 10 bucks or if you want to get a, a real good one that you don't ever mix chems. You always stay with the same chem in the same, same, pr- oh, excuse me, man, I got the hiccups. <laughs> uh, you always stay with the same chems in the same pump sprayer. You always label your pump sprayers and you never mix them. Um, you'll find out if you mix chems, you'll find out real quick. If you mix chems, um, you'll have the hospital trip too. Um, so pump sprayer, what's that cost you? 40 bucks. I, I would get the, like the two gallon one at uh Lowe's or home Depot, whatever, any local hardware store that'll last you about three. If you're doing like we, right now we have 80, well, we just added one yesterday. We have 83 dumpster pad cleanings routes. We, we service them in about six days. We do all of them in the six days. I think we fill up three, maybe three, three per crew, three, uh, two, two and a half, two, two and a quarter gallon jug, cost bonded jugs, pump sprayers. They're, and then, and, 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 you know, that's, that's good enough for them for a week. Um, we don't the really dilute it. We just, uh, we just, water. we just hit it. The only thing no, in we, we, hit, it, we hit it like? straight. What's that? I said the only thing in there is water and degreaser in the pump up sprayers or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's you're you know, it, that's only the food grade ones. All the other ones that aren't food grade, you'll know if it's food grade or not. You'll definitely know it. Um, if it's not, um, if it's not like uh, if it's just like any just normal waste, SH is fine. You okay. can, yeah. I mean, as long as you're not mixing the two while you're, while you know, you're not going to put the greaser down, clean it, and then turn around and hit it with SH. You're going to do one or the other. Um, when does the soap come re- into play, Mike? What's that? When does the soap come into play if we're using degreaser for like a? Oh, food we do break? it. Uh, uh, when it's like black, it's like black and rainbow colored because there's like chicken grease and, and you'll see it. It's like a a whole bunch of stuff out there, and a lot of like you have idiots that dump. They're like uh, they go home. They 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 run a restaurant. They they empty their food out, and then they go and they get their motor oil that they change their car in, and they chuck it in there, and it's leaking all over the place. You'll you'll know the difference of it right away. That's when you know, like, <laughs> if you hit it once with your machine and nothing's moving, yeah, you might want to start hitting that as hot as you can. So why just who who cares on the soap cost? Just hit it with the hottest stuff you got. Let it dwell on there. And stop playing around and get off to the next job. Simple okay. enough. I don't care if you waste the soap. Hit right. it. That's what they, that's what they paid for. Hit it with their hot lava. Get out of there and and rinse it real good and off you go. Time and time is money. Get out of there. Beautiful. So we need soap. We need dynamite degreaser and in some cases um, sodium hypochlorite, which is also known as bleach. So Mike, you're essentially talking about two different types of dumpsters here. So we have food grade dumpsters, which would be at like restaurants and things of that nature. And then you have the ones that are not food grade, which would be like apartment complexes and stuff. Both of those need to be clean. No, only food grade ones here in Jersey. It's um, title title uh, shame on me. Title seven, title seven. Title seven in Jersey. I think it's like every 14 to 15 days. I think it's 15 days because 14 doesn't make sense. It's every 15 days. You have to have it clean. So twice a month, you got to have it cleaned. And 
some like they're lenient with it because they're not they're, their inspectors aren't always going out but if they do go out and it looks like it hasn't been cleaned in like two two three years yeah you're gonna get a fine they get a they get a hearty fine um especially when you know like they could take their like uh, restaurant license away because it's not like a dirty dumpster pad is a dirty kitchen it's the exact same thing they they mirror each other they're under the same title okay perfect so they're yeah. super incentivized then to keep those clean oh yeah Yep. So if you're, if like that's kind of your target, you're going to pick up more food grade dumpsters first. And then you're going to start seeing them around that area that aren't food grade. And you know, it's easy money. And you just walk your way. Hey, listen, we're here on this route. We'll give you, you know, um, a discounted rate because, you know, they're, they're food grade and you're not, you're throwing cardboard and basic gar waste from your, your business in here. Um, so we can help you out. We'll clean it real good once. I mean, and we'll put you in a package plan. You know, what do you want? Once a year you want those, those dumpsters don't have to be cleaned unless they're throwing food grade stuff in them. Other than that, like uh, most of the time, those, they pick up quarterly. We, we do them about every three months. Okay, beautiful. So we can service both of them, but food grade um, is twice a month. The other one is quarterly. I'll probably ask you again about that here in a minute. But um, let's talk about order of operations. You spoke a little bit about that earlier. So what we're doing is we show up. We're going to pick up any loose trash around. We're going to blow it out, and then we're going to go ahead and treat it, wash it, right? Yeah, and so yeah, anything that's loose, you blow it out. I We always blow it out or we, we broom it out. Sometimes they get tight in there. You know, I'm not the uh, skinniest guy in the world. So, um, you know, some of my other guys aren't that skinny either. So it's kind of hard to get in between them. So a uh, good – we used to have, like, the still uh, gas-powered blowers. Man, that's all electric now in this nutty state. It's They're all the DeWalt battery-powered uh, blowers that we we got 900 batteries over there charging and you know, they click in it's it actually it's actually kind of better and you they just blow all that stuff out blower yeah anymore, nah well we can but it's like oh man it's frowned upon it's like what the what the hell man we're okay, like following california, yeah. <laughs> we're following california yeah we're following california's crap <laughs> <laughs> they want to get they want to get rid of it. Uh, I don't know. It's it's so weird. I don't whatever. I don't. It's it, it's just easier because, uh, man, you got you, you like you like you listen. You got to kind of like when you have multiple employees and stuff like that. You kind of got to watch that stuff, even though it's like fifty to one, and you really it's flammable. But yeah, you know, you might have a knucklehead like, hey, man, this is it, it's red. It looks like dynamite degreaser. Let's put it let's put it in the Haas Bonner pump sprayer and let's let's spray it on to see if it works and we'll light it on fire. It might work. Wait, better. Mike, what are you right talking now? about specifically? You lost me. What, what? Yeah, no. So like the gas, the gas that goes in the like the blowers. Right. It's it's it looks just like it looks like. It dynamite degrees. So you're saying it's better this way because then they won't confuse it. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you dumbify it, man. And then like some guys don't like they're you know, I even though it says 50 to one gasoline on it. Ah, if you don't specify to them, like listen, pick up the jug that says dynamite degreaser on it and pour it in the thing. You know, that, so yeah. I, I just kind of eliminated that out of the process. So you blow it around. Sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent. You blow it around. You bring a shovel with you. You pick up all the stuff so you're not picking it up with your hands. You throw it in a dumpster. You spray your um, chemical. You, you spray whatever chemical you're putting down, detergent, SH, dynamite, degreaser. Uh, if you're on a military base, they're going to make you make you, make you use simple green. That's not going to work, but whatever. They're nuts. Um, you let it sit. You know, you'll start seeing it react first. Uh, if it's a heavy one, I'd hit it with the surface cleaner or a turbo tip with a pressure washer. Um, um, you're, it's a dumpster pad. Uh, there's nobody coming out there saying, yes, yeah, your concrete. So I'm not saying go balls to the wall and, and extra concrete, but listen, there ain't nobody walking on it. And then, and then the garbage truck is picking it up and putting it back down. So, uh, stupid Alexa, the, um, <laughs> Yeah, so you're not, it's not like, you know, you know, hit it with the right soap so you don't have to work as hard, clean it, rinse it, and then, you know, you can upsell, like, the fence cleanings and, and around the dumpster 
the actual dumpster itself. Like, so people, you know, they like that clean. So they don't have to put their hands in sludge when they lift it up. Right. That's, I mean, that's it. I mean, there's nothing, <laughs> there ain't nothing else to it. <laughs> right, right, right. And so Mike, uh, with regards to like cleanliness, obviously it's never going to be perfect. Do you have to like set any expectations with the people or like, you know, do you just tell your guys, Hey, spend X, Y, Z amount of time on these. Don't go over that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, only time you have like a discrepancy. Well, I, uh, yeah, that, 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 I'll, I'll talk to you that in a little bit. Is if like um, they rust. So now that's a whole nother process um, of like the rust removal. If they want the rust removed, because some people are like very uh, particular about it. I don't know. Um, hey, listen, can you get this rust off of here so it doesn't make it any worse? So now you're upselling a different, a whole different service for rust removal. And if that ain't under 500 bucks, you're pretty, pretty, pretty dumb. But what I mean is with regards to like how clean do you have to get them, Mike? Like, you know, do you say do no, you tell no, you it's not spend more than 20 minutes on this, you know? No, I mean, and it's you got you got you got to like it's got to look better than what it is. I mean, you're definitely right. going to make it look better than what it is, let it smell better than what it is. And you kind of like kind of put that like in your warranty if you're going to offer a warranty with them. Like if the DEP comes in and says, hey, listen, you know, you know, your guy really didn't clean this up real well. One, that's, that's going to piss me off. But two, like just say, OK, hey, listen, if the DEP comes in and says this is not up to their, their snuff, give me a call right away. I'll send somebody out to you right now and make sure. You know, I, I give you the service that you're looking for if it's something that we missed. But if it's something that they added to it after we cleaned it once and then they're trying to blame it on us because they're getting a ticket because they were cheap and they didn't pay. You know, that's there. That's the fine line with it. OK, beautiful. OK, so we've talked about a lot, Mike. We talked about license and insurance uh, equipment. We need chemicals, uh, the order of operations. Now let's kind of get into how do we land these types of jobs? So how do we build you know, the bulk of, of our route. Walk your butt in and start talking to somebody that pays the bills. If you can't talk to somebody that pays the bills, you need to leave them something. You need to leave them something. I don't have them with me. You need to leave them something that's, well, yeah, bright. Something's bright color and, they, and, and you need to not go away. Like you should be putting this stuff in like package deals. Everybody likes package deals. If you just give them one flat right, create you're not you're not really gonna you're not really gonna land those jobs. But the key to this is is they know that their, their dumpster pad is dirty. They probably already have somebody servicing it. You better come in higher than that person because you have better soaps and better chemicals. Uh, you know that's just the way I think, um, and that's how you should be coming off to them. Uh, you don't go away. So you say you say you go into like 20 of these establishments and they all say no to you. Well, you go back into them the next day and you, you, you just you just keep going back in. And they're like, hey, hey, Mike, how you doing? Like, yeah, I'm here about your dumpster pads again. I haven't heard anything back. Get the other. Here's a here's a nice trick. I'll, I'll give you a nugget, Justin. You always get their business card, whoever you're talking to or the manager's business card, or if there's a stack of business cards in the corner, you grab one of each because you that's automatic email addresses that you can keep sending them information every three days. Like, Hey, listen, I really noticed that you have a safety hazard with your dumpster pad cleaning. And you know, here, here's the title seven from New Jersey DEP website saying you have to have this food grade dumpster cleaned every 15 days. Um, I really want to help you with this safety violation. Please give me a call back. And then you got to answer the phone. Don't don't send it to a voicemail. You answer the phone, get them on a schedule. They're in. Lock them in a contract, and off you go. Okay, beautiful. So let's say, Mike, that I dropped you in any random city throughout the United States, and you started from absolute zero again. You walk into your first place. What does it look like? You're walking up to the counter. What do you say? How you doing, Mike Turman? I noticed you have a safety violation in the back of your property. It's a dumpster pad cleaning. I'm not sure if you know, but every 15 days you're supposed to have that cleaned. Um, would you like, you know, to give you a free estimate within the next 10 minutes? Are you the person that makes these decisions? No. Let me speak to somebody that is. 
Oh, well, they're not here right now. Okay, what time are they going to be here? Okay. Oh, oh, they're oh, okay. So, is, do they have an email address? Do they have a business card? Something I can contact them because I know it's a really good safety violation, and I'm pretty sure that you really don't want the ten thousand dollar fine from New Jersey DEP. That's that's a lie. New Jersey DEP, you know, violation. They don't know. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, here's the other thing. There's a lot of times you're going to have a language barrier, so you you might want to bring something with you the so they can read it. And then you always leave something. You always leave like your business. You sell your business. You always leave something with them. And then you follow up. You have to follow up. You have to make notes. You have to keep following up. You have to never go away. And I guarantee you, they're going to start clicking. And okay, you're going to get to the point where you're like, oh, I don't want to. I got too many of them. <laughs> how how quickly, Mike, do you think you could build a route? Like if, if I dropped you in a random city, how quickly could you get to like 30 of these? Who? Five days? About five days? Yeah, you can get about five really? days. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Most of them already have them have them going to clean. But if you if you start talking to them the right way, <laughs> the biggest part, this biggest <laughs> if you're just starting with dumpster pack cleaning, to work on master your craft. Just keep going. But there's so many other services that we offer that it's it's like we added dumpster pad cleaning after we did like all these other services that we've that we've we've been doing for years. And we already know those violations and we already know it's, you know, like big time, big time commercial properties are big time money, man. And as long as you're approved by them, they will keep coming back to you for everything everything because they don't want to fill out that paperwork again oh um, okay and so yeah about 30 about 30 about five days i can get 30 of them in about five days absolutely okay beautiful beautiful <laughs> but the, right. well, the key to that is getting them close right because travel time sucks off your time you should be doing like you know if you want to really run your guys you should be doing 20 of them in a day mm, if you okay. roll them down you know 11 to 15 a day depends that's one guy so if you have a crew of five guys and they all have their own machines, hey, today, today's Monday. Guess what? We're going out. We're all clean. We, you, you take these 10. You take that 10. You take this 10. You take that 20. Let's go get them done. Let's all make money. Quick. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Um, okay, sweet, Mike. Let's get into like some of the next thing. I wanted to talk a little bit about how you get these quoted. So how are you quoting dumpster pad cleanings? And um, what's the price range typically? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give you a, you, you get undercut a lot. You get undercut a lot with dumpster pad cleanings. So price range. Yeah. You know, you're going to have an initial uh, cleaning fee. If it's the first time you're doing it, regardless if the guy cleaned it last week and they fired him, you're going to have an initial cleaning fee because that entails everything of just learning the property where you're at, you know, if there's a lock on the gate, um, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, that should be, always should have an initial cleaning fee. And then something that's probably about $100 less to service them. Depending on packages, packages that you put them in. Most typical cleanings, we always say three, but it's really four. You have once a year, twice a year. So, once every 12 months, once every six months, a quarterly cleaning, once every three months, or 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 you have people that are really, really, really need them cleaned, that are really popular restaurants that are like high end, they want but twice a month. Sometimes they, sometimes it's like every month or, or uh, every week. Come on in, get clean it. We don't want that smelling in here. We, we got seafood and we, we, we need it cleaned every week. Okay, sweet. So, so give me a ballpark. Like, what do you? Nah. <laughs> what do you if think? You're, like, if, you, if if you're if you're not hitting three hundred k, you're you're it. Uh, I mean, ballpark per cleaning the two hundred fifty bucks. Okay, per clean, and that's not even the initial cleaning. The initial cleaning should really be a little bit higher than that, right? Your initial cleaning should be in the three hundred dollar range. Absolutely okay. beautiful. So you figure, do that, man. We got we got eighty three of them right now. 83 of them right now at let's just put per cleaning, just per cleaning. Some of them are twice a month. 
per cleaning at 250 bucks. Do that, man. Uh, It'll be like what, two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars, something like that. So we that was another one of my questions. How often are you servicing them? So some are on two week contracts, some of them are quarterly, some of them I think you, did you say bi monthly or no? Right, yeah, yeah. Some um like really like if I'm not gonna give you that town because I make a lot of money in it. Um if they're really good restaurants and really wealthy areas and most of the time they s- they're putting like food or putting like nasty scraps and stuff like that out that they, they, they're going to, they're, they're going to want you in there pretty much like every week. Um, so you have a, you have to change that. So twice a month is pretty good every 15 days. And then you have like, Hey, it really stinks. I don't care. Keep us on the normal schedule, schedule us in for another cleaning in between it because it smells so bad. And you just go in and clean it. Boom. Um, okay. I want to talk a little bit about the upsells one more time, Mike. You had mentioned cleaning the fence as an upsell. What was the other? Uh, I think you had mentioned rust removal from the dumpster itself or from the area. Anything. Uh, you get rust removal um, if there's if they're leaking real bad. Most of the time, you only get that when they're like like every you know six months you're going to one of them and it, it just corrodes all the way. Uh, the fence, inner, interior, and exterior. Uh, the the lids. Do you want the dumpster actually clean? I mean, you can add that in your pricing if you want. We don't. Um, we clean it anyway. But a lot of times, the uh, the guys are like, "Hey, listen, can you do like a real good deep clean on the lid?" Because we we're tired of touching that. Even though they don't they don't even realize that some of the the uh, <laughs> the garbage companies switch the dumpsters on them all the time. <laughs> So they don't even they don't even know. <laughs> um, and then like anything else around it, if there's like a pad in front of it, it's concrete cleaning. If there's curbs around it, concrete cleaning. It's con- curb cleaning. Um, whatever else, the runoff. If there's a big runoff, you're not cleaning all that crap all the way to the drain. If they want that all like cleaned up and stuff like that, you know, hit it with some soap and 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 rock on. Most of the time, that's asphalt, so you got to do a little bit of scrubbing. What's your time worth? Boom. Okay, excellent. And so all of these that you're selling are maintenance contracts. You would never do like a one-off uh, dumpster bag cleaning, right, Mike? You can if the – yeah, you can. If it's – um, you know, typically you only see them when they're like um, either the garbage company switch or um, they're selling the property. And, it, you know, you have people coming in there to look at a property and, you know – the, the, the dumpster guys never picked anything up and it's it's like it's so there you go that's a, that's a real good key to it you kind of want to put something down regardless to make it smell different than sludge mm, okay yeah so i know like now, in can cleaning, i know in can cleaning you put like some fabulosa down can you put it you're not doing like- it you're not you're not you, yeah you can <laughs> but you're not you know yeah, you ain't doing that with a damn dumpster, Justin. <laughs> Dude, I've only you probably, you probably got like dead animals in there. <laughs> I've only been around like two or three dumpster cleanings, and dude, dumpster cleaning is dirty business. I will say that. Try cleaning the trucks that pick them up. We do that on the weekends too. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, that's crazy. Um, so, Mike, dirtiest dumpster you've ever seen? Have you ever seen something like so bad you wouldn't even let anybody clean it? You say we don't want any part of this. Yeah, I had a. I don't know what it was. I we didn't know what it was. I made my guy put a Tyvek suit on, a Tyvek suit and a and a mask because it was. Uh, yeah, it was pretty. Na- I don't know. I don't know what they're like. I don't know, man. You gotta watch it because you never know. You might open you you might open that lid and there might be a body in there. You know, you got. <laughs> I ain't kidding you. So yeah, you, uh, you gotta watch a restaurant. The visor. Yeah, it's a restaurant. So who? I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not saying what kind of restaurant, but there's 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 probably some different carcasses that were. You can get like uh, another big one. I didn't even think about it. I mean, where we first sold our first ones are like. Um, Butcher shops. That's a big one. Um, they have dumpsters. They are woo. They I mean, most of the, if they're not using a scrap for like hot dogs or whatever the hell they're doing with it, there's there's the all their all their cardboard is all bloody and you, you get I mean, 
you, you know, you'll you'll smell it when you get up. You'll smell it when you get near it. <laughs> Dang, it, it doesn't matter what you got. You're going to be spraying it everywhere just to say so you, so you don't have to smell the, the bunk when you get near it. <laughs> <laughs> and well, they, they cost me. They cost more money. You should be upcharging for that stuff. I mean, if you if you if you have to think in the back of your mind, like, like, man, I really sh- I really should have been paying. I should have been charging some more money for this. Why? Why haven't you done that then? Just listen. I'm going to charge you more money for this because this is this is filthy. I'm not, I'm not doing this No. And then right. you know your employee your employees will tell you like, oh man, that one was bad. Oh really? That bad? All right, all right. Well, let me call, let me call the owner. <laughs> okay perfect mike do you have any bad customer like horror stories with this kind of business are there any customers that are like worse than others with regards to dumpster pack cleaning yeah so you know i mean it, i i typically say with like uh chinese food restaurants and japanese food restaurants and stuff like that they won't pay or they switch the or like uh, dunkin donuts is a big one for this um because they they now that they serve food uh wawa 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 has their own own pre- pressure washer guys that do their rotating, but Dunkin' Donuts doesn't. But Seven Elevens don't. Like your food, food. Your they all serve food now, so all their dumpster pads they're getting rid of wastes. So that's a here's another nugget for you. Uh, yeah, they like um, you don't put them in net thirty. Nope, absolutely not. It's net fifteen. If they miss one payment, they're on COD. And what is COD, wow. Mike? For anybody who doesn't know. Cash on delivery. That means uh, you need to pay me exactly before I start cleaning this, and then I'll clean it, and then we're out of here. Okay. So one of the biggest things, like takeaways, is some restaurants swap ownership, and then is there like do you get you get fired at that point because the new owners don't bring you on or? Yeah, well, they just loses in the contracts and stuff like that, and then that's I mean, again, like when I was on air and showing them that my lawyer sees my CRM. So the second they're delinquent, they get served with paperwork. They get phone calls. They get emails. If none of that's answered within an, like a couple of business days, they get served with a certified letter. You need to pay us. And we won't. It'll automatically hit me. And they're like, no, nah, don't don't do this until we get paid. Okay, beautiful. So, Mike, we kind of covered like the gamut with regards to all the information. I just want to go over a couple questions that we had in the chat real quick, if you're cool with that. Sure. Okay, sweet. So Michael wanted to know, do you clean the pads that the dumpsters sit on or do you clean the dumpster as well? Uh, we always, we just clean the pads. We upsell, I mean, it's not that much. You're, you're maybe, you know, 30 to $50 if it's a, a dumpster and the actual fence. If the customers want the dumpster, uh, the dumpster actually clean, they will tell you when you're giving them an estimate to do the pad. They'll tell you right away. Okay. Or you'll know after the first time. They're like, hey, listen, how about you even clean the dumpster? I don't know. We didn't negotiate that in the terms and conditions. Do you want me to add it on? And what do you add it on for? What's a dumpster? Ten bucks? It depends. Oh, they might have three dumpsters on a property. So that what, what's it gonna thing. take you? Five seconds? <laughs> That was confusing to me whenever I first heard about dumpster pad cleaning. Like, I didn't really understand that it was just the pad that it sat on, not the actual dumpster that needed to be cleaned. So, I kind of I resonate right. with the comment. Well, um, I mean, when it rains, it runs down. So, right. if you do, you know, like dirt. Wait, I, listen, I'm not on everyone. These guys are spraying them because they don't want to smell them. That's what it is. They don't want to smell them. It smells good after you leave, and it's it's just a cleaner thing. Some you might get in trouble with some of the dumpster cleaning companies that you're not supposed to put that stuff on. But I, I mean, most of them guys don't freaking care. Go ahead and put some Fabulosa down. I'm just kidding. Uh, do you Fabulosa, contain- What is it? What is that? Is that laundry detergent? <laughs> You've never seen like a purple Fabulosa before? It's like a uh, smell good after you like wash the floor. Nah, see, you know, like Cody got me hooked on that stupid Persil of like seven years ago. And I haven't, I haven't seen, that's the only thing we order. That's all we eat. That's because I love the smell of it. And it's like, I, we don't, that's, that's what we use. Like, I don't, I don't go around the grocery store and like look at names and smell soaps. Well, there you <laughs> so go. I don't know. Well, you gotta I don't, use but it was the smell like. What's it uh, smell like? knowledge equals power we talked about this a little bit containing the water and you said a lot of people didn't care right but it was like a it was like a rule that you're supposed to contain the water was that right mike yeah i mean if if there's a drain that's close by um other than that i don't know i'll get i'll I'll keep doing it until i get in trouble 
Okay, there you okay, go. What's that? What's that? Far, what's that fine going to be? A thousand bucks? Okay, I just made three hundred grand freaking cleaning dumpsters in with, within a year. There's over over twenty some thousand dollars a month. You're going to give me a thousand dollar fine? Oops, my bad. <laughs> I, 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 it's hard to say it that way, but. So, uh, <laughs> Juan Wizard wanted to ask Mike. Just go in there. He, he wanted to ask, like, to land the jobs. Do you just go in when they're not busy and talk to the managers? Is there like a particular time that you like to go into some of these establishments? When I show up, I don't care if it's busy or not busy. You know, it could be. Go in it could be lunch, bro. Deal, baby. Close it. Go right. Out. It could be lunchtime. Yeah, and they, then that's that's actually kind of better with lunchtime. I don't know. You might get, uh, it depends if they're, they, they got an ego or something like that. They might brush you aside. Like, I don't have time for this stupid stuff now. We got, we got food going out. Um, catch them. Hey, <laughs> catch them in the morning time when they're opening up. Are you snapping photos of the business? Are you, are you, uh, you know, marketing other services that you got? Like snapping a photo of the business hours. Right. You got to, you got to scout these places out because you got to build a route. You don't want to like, you know, like, get a dumpster one pad in like Trenton, New Jersey, where I'm at. And then go all the way to Cape May, two and a half hours away for 500 bucks. Right. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's 30,000 businesses. I don't know the number. There's 30,000 businesses in between where you're at and where you're going. And every single one of them has got a dumpster pad. So right. uh, you might want to start where you're at and then just draw a circle and start hitting all the places. If you hit them three or four times a week, I guarantee you they're going to know you by first name. You're like, oh, dumpster Mike, dumpster pad? Yeah. Anybody calling me back? No, nobody's calling me back. I, I keep giving you information. Well, here, here's the boss's information. Give him a call. Second, I got their email. He's he until he till he unsubscribes from me. It's just keep you hitting him. It's okay, sweet. So it's a squeaky wheel gets the uh, grease, right? Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What did you say? Right squeaky wheel gets the oil or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was a saying I always heard growing up. I don't know. Um. Okay. Right, so I guess I, I guess that works. <laughs> <laughs> Levi asked if the stream will, be, stream will be saved on the channel. It will. I had a couple of people asking about that. Um, how many on a route? My, don't be stealing my stuff. <laughs> What's that? How many on a route? Many, I'm, I'm going to like what assume what this question is, Mike, and I'm going to ask you like how. what's the max number that if you were a solo operator that you could take on um, for one route? I can do 20 in a day. Okay. Like, like, I mean, and that's like, as long as they're, I mean, with travel and stuff like that, when you first start off making a route, just like window cleaning, you're going to move around a little bit because they're, you know, you're not going to, you know, unless you get lucky, you're not going to, you, you know, like we have a big mall around here that's not too far from us and there's 15 dumpsters there. I mean, right. they're within, you know almost arms reach of each other mm -hmm. oh where they're where they're going this so, guy says uh epa fine started about a hundred thousand dollars because you said yeah, what's the yeah, fine on that gonna be yeah but I, I don't care like it hasn't hit me yet i mean we've been doing this for about three and a half years now i haven't i've, I've had njdep come up on me once if you work for njdep yeah i'll, I'll come talk to you <laughs> <laughs> okay mike if you ever get it's busted. The same thing. It's like if you're watching the driveway and, and sh gets in the street the dep is going to give you a fine yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> okay sweet now mike. i mean yeah if it's a heavy business area yeah but if you're like in like a parking garage and people are parking in there and you got sh going all over the place because you're cleaning the parking garage and you don't control your runoff, yeah, they're gonna be a little bit pissed. And then the runoff goes right into the river. Yeah, we got dead fish. Yeah, that might that might eh, mm. eh. or dead alligator. <laughs> Mike, this is the last question. Somebody asked how competitive <laughs> this is, and then how many people already have or having the service done that like you approach. It's competitive. You'll find them when you take <laughs> somebody's contract. I guarantee you, they're going to be calling you. I guarantee you, they're going to throw death threats at you. Yeah, because I mean that's a lot of money for a lot of people. Now, listen, I'm not doing anything different. Uh, and wait, it's actually kind of funny because my prices are higher than the other guys. But 
we service what we preach. So like, we're going to be there. We're going to clean it. And guess what? You're going to pay us. If not, we're going to have a problem and we're going to do a good job. If you have a problem, I mean, you know, and then the other part that I, is you have all these other services, like you're a one-stop shop. So, you know, it, it, it washes your hands, wash each other with that because they, you know what I mean? They trust you with their dumpster pad. They're everybody, their employees are going to it all the time. And they're like, Hey, listen, our concrete out front looks real bad. Our, our awnings look real bad. Our windows look real bad. Um, you know, the deck that we have off that people go and eat on. Hey, listen, we're, we're slow on Sundays. Can you come clean that deck? Can you, can, anything. And, and, and it, it's the follow on services for that. Or, um, you know, it, it, it's upselling. It's up on, on, you know, like a $200 job. You're, you're, you're landing five, $6,000 jobs in the snap of the finger. Uh, how many people we serviced? Oh, Lord. Are we, and you got cancellations. It's a minimum three months. You have to be in three month contract. Three month contract, you have to do it because then that, if you have employees, you're going to have to see it that way because that's how you break even. Minimum three months on labor, time, soap, all that other stuff. Minimum three months. It's that you don't break even. You make a little bit of profit, but most, I think I have one three month contract and they got to resign it every three months and they get charged for maybe having to resend it to them every three months. But most of our other ones, they're in like two, three year contracts. And they're like, okay, just get it done. So Mike, when you bring a new business yeah. on, you make them sign a contract in, right? Absolutely. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. it covers everybody. Why not? I paid all this money to a lawyer to have all these contracts. Why not? Just send it to the lawyer. The lawyer takes care of it. You pay. The, I, well, I pay. I pay my lawyer. I don't know about you guys. But once you start getting your scale into a certain spot, yeah, you're going to be talking to lawyers on like a weekly basis. Yes. Yes, you will. Because you're going to cover your butt. You cover their butt. You're covering a customer's butt. You're covering your butt. You're covering everybody's butt, even your insurance company. You're covering their butt as well, as long as you're in the parameters. And it's, I mean, that's just the way to operate in business, man. It's easy stuff. Cool. Okay, beautiful, Mike. Last question for you. Um, you're doing over 300 grand. Is there anything that we didn't talk about this in this video that would contribute to you being able to do $300,000? Like, maybe it's like the crew. Like, you have to have employees. You have to have the contracts. Like, what are the things in place that you need in order to get to that kind of money a year? gotta have the drive to do it man you gotta be hungry you got you just go build a route like you can come you can under under wait get ahead. come on over you want you want to buy my dumpster pack cleaning come on over i'll give it to you like i'm not gonna give it to you i'm gonna sell it to you but you know you're i'm gonna i'm gonna make that money back but you, you know like it's not <laughs> Yeah. It's easy I stuff started, right Mike people I, just are hungry every, every every new process I do I do myself first Okay. I, I flat out do myself first. I don't know. Maybe when I'm like 50 years old, I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be doing this new service today. <laughs> but Beautiful. I do it my first so none of you guys can complain. I love the idea. If you think about it, though, if you have 84 recurring businesses, that's 84 parking lots. That's 84 buildings that need to be cleaned. That's 84 windows that you could land. Like the, the amount of opportunities that open themselves up to you whenever you have that kind of a route, I think. The amount of money is incredible. Even if, like, if it was ten thousand per, you know, place, what would that be like? Eight hundred and forty grand. Right. That'd be almost a million bucks. Uh, it's that's just one service. <laughs> 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 it just starts at one service, man. and that's like, uh, I, I mean, hey, listen, you got if you're not doing it and you're paying your guys, pay your guys a little bit more money. I mean, I, I you know, that's against Mike Badan's uh uh, things, but you know, I like told him, I tell Mike all the time to pay his guys more money. Just pay him a little bit more money. I mean, our guys make a lot of money. They make a lot of money. Absolutely sweet. Okay, Mike, thank you so much for coming on, man, sharing all this information with us. You have anything else um, that you want to say before we roll? No, but get that money, baby. Hustle hard <laughs> and get that money, baby. Hey, we need a word of the day. What do you want the word of the day to be? Oh, I don't know. It could be dumpster. Don't matter. Dumpster? Yeah, yeah. A dumpster pack. No, wait, 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 wait. Oil. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys made this part of the video. On the, wait, wait, you said it different. Put the oil on the grease or something like that. You said uh, uh, the what was it? The, I don't even remember. If you guys made this part of the video, comment down below. Oil. But my name is Justin Forever. So I'm Until next time, hustle hard. Get that money, baby. Peace. Peace.